Welcome, everybody. This is Games Over Plastic, episode number 16. I am Midnight, back again with the two most amazing co-hosts in the industry. First and foremost, we have the man, the myth, the legend, the JRPG master, and the man who has returned to the school, Sean Mason. How you doing, sir? I'm doing good, you know, yep, summer vacation is officially over, I just think of the, um, you know, Roxas from Kingdom Hearts 2 right at the end, Hodge knows what I'm talking about when he goes, well, guess my summer vacation's over, <laughs> yeah, I just, that's all I think about, a couple of my friends sent me that, actually, which is pretty funny, but yeah, school's over, I'm coaching soccer right now, so varsity soccer, we had our first game last night, we won one nothing. I'm pretty happy. Uh, I don't think our team's going to be great. We have a lot of, it's kind of a rebuilding year, but um, I'm pretty excited. We got a good squad. But yeah, first day for students on Monday, I'm preparing to hear a lot of Hawk Tua's and um, I don't even know, so whatever else, whatever else is uh, these youths are uh, popularly saying right now. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh man, I, yeah, I feel bad for you having to listen to all this Gen Z slang all the time. Dude's probably yeah. talking about like the Rizzler and stuff. Like, oh the Riz, yeah. Oh, trust me, it's so funny when I say it. I'll be like, "Yo, what's up? What's what's with the Riz?" <laughs> <laughs> and like, I know what it means, but I purposely like say it wrong. Oh yeah, that's hilarious. That oh was... yeah. All right, and last but not least, we have the master of graphics, the man who is extremely exhausted, but as always. Showing up to give his all. Hodge, how we doing today, sir? I see you rocking that Bears cap. I know you're excited. Oh, yeah. Well, it's a good day. Yesterday, the Packers lost their first game. So as of right now, the Bears have a lead on them in the NFC North. So they have one less loss. Uh, nice but half a game lead. When everyone hears this on Monday, the Bears will be 1-0. That's for sure. So if you, know, you can hold me to that. I'm just I am so freaking excited. Football's back. It is my favorite time of year. And it means summer's over, which Sean enjoys summers. That's the worst part of work for me. So <laughs> I'm happy the summer's over. But uh, yes, bring on football. I am so excited for the NFL to return. Well, the NFL has returned. We've already had two games at time of recording. And then as of tomorrow, all but one game. So yeah, I am so excited for football to return. Bear down, baby. Hyped. Oh, yeah. Yeah, dude, I'm I am so thrilled for football returning. Football is by far my favorite sport. I get so into it. I love the Buckeyes, I love the Steelers, and I love fantasy football. I got two fantasy football teams. I have a pick'em team, and I have like 15 best ball teams on underdog fantasy. Um, Sean, I need you to coach me on how to gamble and how to bet because I am 0 and 5 in my parlays. I literally cannot win. Um, I did one last night where I needed Saquon Barkley needed a touchdown and he got that. He and got three. Jo- and, and got love, three of them. <laughs> yeah, and love needed 262 yards and he got 260 yards and got injured at the very end of the game. And I was like, "You got to be kidding me!" Two yards short, and he's on my fantasy team and he got injured. And I'm like, "You yeah. got to be kidding me!" Reports Dude, that- are good though. Reports are good. The ACL is intact. The report came out this morning. Uh, as far as uh, betting advice. Uh, don't bet on the Steelers to win the Super Bowl. That's my advice. <laughs> yeah. I did. Yeah. I did. I put $100 down on the Steelers to win the Super Bowl. Um, and if they somehow win the Super Bowl, which is not impossible, mind you. Teams have won the Super Bowl Highly before with a great probable. defense and a running game. Um, that has yeah, happened. In, two, in the year 2000. Yeah. In the year 2000. Um, I'll win $5,100 if they do. So that would be uh, awesome. My cousin always at the start of every single year, he always bets on the Packers doing the Super Bowl. We're Bears fans, but he does it because he's like, if they're going to win, I'm going to win money. <laughs> so every single year he puts like five dollars or ten dollars on the the Packers to win the Super Bowl. And it always pays out like three thousand bucks. So he's like, if it if it, wow. if they ever win the Super Bowl, I'm just going to win money. <laughs> Because I'm gonna be so angry a, that they've won the Super yeah. Bowl. I don't think I. Can I have do a. That. I have. I have a futures bet down right now uh, for the exact Super Bowl result: Bengals over Packers. Hundred dollar bet. Payout is fifteen thousand. So wow. Nice. So okay. the exact result. So Dude. I do exact result every year. I've, I've only. I've never hit it in when I bet, but like I, I've been doing like pre, you know preseason predictions since I was like in like sixth grade. I got it. I, I nailed the exact result of the Super Bowl once. It was uh, 
Saints over Colts in 2009 when I was in eighth grade. <laughs> nice. I actually, two years ago, was it? I bet at the start of the season, Chiefs Rams Super Bowl and the Chiefs blew it to the Bengals in the AFC Championship. Yep. So yeah. I was so, I was so close to winning like $600 or something like that from yeah. just betting that that was the Super Bowl. I was so bad. <laughs> yeah. I'm literally 0 and 5 on here. Well, I've only lost 50 bucks because there's just $10 bets each, but still. Um, I mean, no one of these. No I should probably quit. It's easy. Yeah. <laughs> no, I should probably quit. Said, there's a reason why they said the house always wins. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like those things, like you put 10 down and you win 30, right? So you triple your money. But really, mathematically speaking, like these are both about a coin flip statistically. Um, so you only have really like a 25% chance of winning and you triple your money. So they, they just have a built in margin where they're always going to make money for the most part, mm-hmm. barring some crazy stuff. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's the one thing I hate about living in Texas right now is I can't do my fan duel bets because every year I always do like these parlays are like a dollar to win a thousand. And every year I've had one win that's at least five hundred dollars, which just covers my losses for the year. (laughs) Yeah, you can do those little parlays that I do on underdog. Um, They're they're fine, I guess. Um, Yeah. So if you're not on underdog, let me refer you and. I think we both get free money, but we'll talk about that later if you do. But anyways, guys, yeah, football is back, and I cannot wait. Fantasy football, baby. My team, my, my guys have already been killing it. Like, I'm up huge. Um, but anyways, let's keep it moving, guys. Let's get into the show. Um, let me get the administrative crap out of the way. This is, of course, Games Over Plastic, the podcast for the agnostic gamers, coming to you on all audio podcast platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcast, Overcast, Pocket Cast, every cast. Check us out there. You can also find us on YouTube at youtube.com slash at games over plastic. Um, you can find us on there. If you are listening to the audio version right now and you want to see the amazing video version with our cameras and Hodge's insanely great graphics that he does, um, just look in the description. There's a link to the video version as always. So check us out. Uh, drop us a sub on YouTube. Uh, leave us likes, leave us comments, please. It helps us move up that all-encompassing algorithm, and we appreciate it. We love you. But that's it. That's the administrative stuff. Let's go ahead and get into our one and only write-in. Um, as always, guys, if you want to write into the show, just go on the YouTube version and leave us a comment and say, here's my write-in. Type it up. We have one from Meatball, uh, Sean. This question is really tailored to you, I think. So you want to go ahead and read the write-in? and Yeah, sure. I'll read it. the write-in. So uh, this is from Meatball. He's a good guy. Um, he said, sticking with the food theme, what's a meal you made for someone that you're most proud of? For me, it's making a pasta carbonara with homemade garlic bread for my wife on our very first date. Well, I'm glad that that date worked out and now you were married. That's fantastic. Um Yeah, so uh, as many people know who listen, I I love to cook, I love to bake, do my Sunday dinner every Sunday. So it was really hard to pinpoint like a uh, exact meal that I'm really proud of because I I just love cooking in general. But something that I am always proud of is around holiday time is just making food for uh, my loved ones. Like uh, around, I love Thanksgiving. I love around Thanksgiving making the turkey, making all my pies. You know, I'm in the kitchen like basically all day Wednesday and Thursday. Like that, that. You know, making homemade pie crust, making the pies, letting the crust sit overnight, uh, making my um, cornbread stuffing, which I absolutely adore. And my my, it's my mom's favorite dish. She looks forward to it every year. And I always tell her, like, Mom, you don't have to wait till Thanksgiving. Like, I can make it for you anytime. She's like, no, we'll wait until Thanksgiving. So, like, the cornbread stuffing. Uh, really, any type of holiday meal I really look forward to. On birthdays as well. Um, like my wife on her birthday, she loves ribs just like I do. I love ribs too, but she loves ribs and chicken wings. Like we have a lot of the similar taste. So every year for her birthday, like I'll make her ribs and I'll make her chicken wings and the ribs are in the crock pot. And there's, I I have a special barbecue sauce that I do. I let it, you know, slow cook all day. And then, you know, I make my chicken wings in the griddle. I usually do two type of marinades. Oh, not marinades, like rub ons. So like dry rubs. So, you know, I let her pick the dry rubs and then I make my famous Mac salad that she absolutely loves. So I just like I like cooking for people in general, like Sunday dinner. Most of the time, Sunday dinner, it's, I don't choose it. I, I always ask everybody, like, what do you guys want? What do you guys want? And I'll make whatever they want. So it, it's really I just love cooking for people. It's a good time. Hopefully that answers the question. 
<laughs> right on. Yeah. Good stuff. Shout out to Meatball. We love him. He's a great person and a great uh, supporter of the show, which we really appreciate. Um, yeah, I'm not for me. I'm not a huge chef or anything. I've never been a huge cook cook person. Um, I live alone, so I'm not really cooking for anyone the majority of the time. Um, only recently, really, in the past few years when I got the air fryer, did I even start cooking anything. And it's just basic air fryer stuff. You know, I just I'll fry up some chicken wings. I'll, you know, I'll make some steaks. I'll make some sausages and glizzies and stuff, but nothing, nothing crazy. Like it's nothing fancy. I'm not a master chef like Sean. Um, I just make some food and I eat it. Not you know what I mean? Chef. Um, I so I really chef, don't I wouldn't be a teacher. <laughs> yeah, I really don't have a great answer to this, but shout out to Meatball. We do love some food. We know that. Um, Hodge, you got anything on this? Actually, I well, I'm not I don't make food that often. But what, when you were talking about like holiday, it did remind me of one Christmas. I had used this recipe a handful of times for myself that I found when I was living on my own where basically it was just an egg wrap, you know, breakfast wrap. And it was really freaking good. And I made so I made it for my family like a Christmas a few years ago. And I really enjoyed doing that because usually my mom will wake up and she'll make something for everyone because, you know, she's the mom and it's Christmas family. So I'm so that, that with Christmas. I was like, yeah, I'll make these. You can throw the cinnamon rolls <laughs> in the uh, in the oven, but I'm going to make these wraps. And so we had those for Christmas once and they were really good. But yeah, I'm not I'm not a big I'm not a big cooker. I can't I'm not. I'm not that good at it, so I'm, and I'm just so busy, I'd never find the time to do it. <laughs> well, as Ratatouille, as Remy said in Ratatouille, or Ratatouille, whatever that quote from Ratatouille is, anyone can cook. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, Sean, you, out, yeah. you talked move. about the holiday meals. You you make any sweet potatoes? I love sweet potatoes. Uh, yeah, I do make a couple sweet potato dishes, but my, um, so my dad and Claire, they both don't like sweet potatoes. I love them, and so does my mom and my sister and her husband do as well. So, um, sometimes I'll make it, but it's kind of like, kind of want everyone to, you know, enjoy it, you know, except for me, you know, I'll make stuff I don't like. That's one of my favorite things for Thanksgiving. Um, this isn't a Thanksgiving sweet episode, potato pie. but, um, well, sweet potato pie is great, but my grandma rest in peace. She used to make the best sweet potatoes. It was just like a soft boiled sweet potatoes. And then it was, just, it was like pure dessert. I mean, I'm, we're talking about butter, brown sugar, um, like caro, like corn syrup, caro syrup on it. Um, marshmallows. It was just pure, yeah. sweet deliciousness. And it was so good. Kind of like a sweet potato pie without the crust. Yeah, kind of. I loved it. I loved it. Yeah, I love sweet potato pie, pumpkin pie. But all right. Great write in meatball. Shout out to you. Thank you for writing in. And and you guys, dear listeners, please write us in. If you have questions about video games, sports, whatever, school for Sean, it doesn't matter. Write us in some questions on the YouTube and we will pick somebody and we will use your question on the episode. Um, but let's go ahead and transition, boys, into what we are playing, shall we? And we will start with the man in the Bears hat, ready for some football. He's so excited because he finally has a star-studded offense. We just <laughs> talked about it. What games are you playing, Hodge? I wish I could say I've been playing Madden to get ready for it, but I hear this new Madden sucks. Oh, Madden so. sucks. <laughs> I heard it's absolutely terrible. It's but just so I, unbalanced. It's like, there's no garbage. It's garbage. <laughs> yeah. So what I have been playing was I uh, downloaded Vampire Survivors on PlayStation because I forgot it was finally released for a place, and I already have all the achievements on Xbox. So I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to platinum it on PlayStation 2. And so I, uh, I've been playing through that. I've earned – there's like 228 21. trophies or something. 21. Yeah, 221. I'm at like 70, so I still have a ways to go <laughs> for that. But yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I forgot how hard it is when you're not like leveled up completely when you have all the characters unlocked and weapons. Like it's actually a really hard game at first, but yeah, I'm loving it. That game is so addicting. It's in the endorphin rush the game is basically what how people describe it. So yeah, I've been in uh enjoying that. Uh, firstly, I don't know if you guys have anything to say about it or else I can move on from there. I know I've talked about it before, so Sean, I've never played it. Uh, I've only, I've looked at it. It looks interesting. Like I'm going to play it eventually. Um, it looks interesting. I probably, I don't know if I'll get it on PlayStation. I might get it on my switch. Mm. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter where you play it. It's, just, it's, yeah, if you look at it, it's really like when I saw the gameplay i was like that looks so stupid why would i want to play it and then you play it and it's like the most addicting game you'll ever play in your life so yeah it's it's awesome yeah it's i was i was debating getting it on switch but i like i like earning the platinums and trophies and stuff so 
Uh, that's the trophy brain rot of not getting it on Switch. But I also feel like I've I was playing um God, I played what some game on Switch recently. Oh, it's just Link's Awakening where it the frames were dropping a lot. And I'm like, it should this game shouldn't be dropping frames. So with as busy as Vampire Survivors gets, I feel like it's gonna be skipping a lot on that system. But uh, I'm not sure. I've never played it there. But um, yeah, I've. With- I've wanted to play Vampire Survivors. Like at first I was like, this sounds and looks so stupid, but just seeing how everyone loves it so much and how it's just like straight up ad- addiction. And it's four dollars. Um, yeah. Like I, I kind of do want to play it, but my concern is that I will get too addicted and just waste too much time. Um, so I'm purposely avoiding it for the time being so that I can try to work through my 900 game backlog, well, it's which nice. never ends, but it's nice because a run, it times out at 30 minutes. So it, mo- I mean, if, if, if you pause and whatnot, it'll take like 40, but it's just a quick thing. You could do a run and drop out again, which is really nice. I like games like that. So that is, that's literally one of it was just like Hades, vampire survivors and Hades. Just just one of those things. It's like, I got 45 minutes to kill. I'll do a couple runs and see what I can do. But yeah, so I really like it for that. It's, it's a great game. But I did drop it recently because Astrobot came out uh, yesterday. And, well, technically Thursday night. It was midnight Eastern, so I got it at 11 p.m. on Thursday. So I watched. I played about a half hour of it after the uh, Chiefs-Ravens game. And then I played a bunch of it yesterday when I got off work. And I missed the gym this morning before we recorded because I was playing it for four hours. So... I am obsessed with this game. It's so good. It plays exactly like Astro's Playroom, which if anyone has a PS5, it came with your PS5. Please play it. It's so good. And it's like a six hour platinum or something like that. It's very, very easy to beat. Very fun. And this game just expands on it. It's just a love letter to PlayStation. It's like at first I was kind of concerned, like how can you make a mascot of your system, literally just someone who advertises your system. Cause like at all over the game, it just shows, you know, the, the square triangle circle and cross, like all just over. And it just has all the PlayStation branding on the coins that you pick up and stuff. I'm like, it feels a little dirty with it being so corporatized, but at the same time, the love and care they put into the brand of PlayStation and all the IP that come with it. It's it, doesn't overstep that boundary even though i feel like it's that close to doing it because like it would be like the same thing if you were playing halo and he's like let me boot up my microsoft surface and like it's just <laughs> like don't do that so that's kind of astro is very borderline that but it's it's it shows so much love for playstation that like you can't hate it because it's really more about the games than the brand it's just they put the brand in there so i let it go for that but the gameplay Oh my God, it's so much fun. Obviously, I, I love platformers, so it's no surprise I love this game, but it is one of my favorite platformers so far that I've ever played. Astros was up there pretty much just behind the Spyro trilogy, if, if I'm being honest. Like Spyro and then Astro, these games are so much fun, and everyone, everyone should play this game. It's so good. At least play the f- one that came for free on your PlayStation, and if you love it, then get Astrobot because you have no excuse not to play it as free. <laughs> But yeah. yeah, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to this game so much. Uh, I have it. I haven't started it yet. Uh, I'm just in the middle of doing a couple other things. I've been a little busy, but like like you, Hodge, I love you know I love platformers. Um, and this I loved the pack and tie with the PS5. Mm-hmm. It was awesome. It was I got so the platinum, good. but I played through it. I played through it a couple times just because it, it was mm-hmm. so much fun. Just the gameplay is so much fun. It's like pure. It reminds me so much of Nintendo. And like yeah. Nintendo is like that is synonymous with like the, the platformer and they like they nail the platformer and so many people try to emulate that and they fail at it like immensely. Mm-hmm. So the fact that Sony was able to nail this and just the homage it pays to so many of past so much of the past IP like I've seen some screenshots of just like random obscure PlayStation IP from the PS2 era that they pay homage to and it's like I can't believe they threw that in there and it's just it's a love letter to PlayStation fans. I, I cannot yeah. wait to play this game just from the, the way it looks and the gameplay. And I cannot believe, like I thought I knew it was going to do well. I can't believe how many people are just adoring this game. Mm-hmm. Like people yeah, are saying like it's like their favorite game of the right year. Now? Yeah. yeah. People are saying it's like their favorite game of the year. Yeah. It's so good. It's, it was my most, I remember we did the, our most, uh, 
Um, the games we're most excited about for the the second half of the year, and Astro was my number one, and it is earning that title right now. I'm sure Bail Guard's going to do the same for mm-hmm. uh, Midnight, and but Astro, yeah, it's this is living up to every expectation I had and surpassing it because you also get these little powers on each level, which are super fun to use, kind of like how in Playroom you had the same thing. But and then the other thing I have to say, I know everyone says this also, but the dual sense like haptic feedback of like running on ice for sand for sliding. Like you feel everything different. Like it's so hard to describe. It's like one of those, you have to play it to understand yeah. what people are talking about with this feeling. It's, it's so cool. It's, I wish more PlayStation games used instead of it just being like changing the trigger pull for like a bow and arrow versus a gun. Like I wish they actually added more to that controller that it was one of those things when they announced it, I was like, that's really cool, but no one's going to utilize it. And of course, yeah, it, not many people. The have. games, yeah, the games that <clears throat> do use it do it mm-hmm. so well. Like yeah. it's awesome. I, it must be difficult to incorporate. It has to be because mm-hmm. you would think that more games would try to use it. Yeah, because it it's insane how good it feels. <laughs> like yeah, it, it, yeah, it it really puts you into the game more. But yeah, Astrobot, I'm loving it. I uh, can. I've already rescued like 104 of the 304 <laughs> bots so like i'm i i'm the kind of person who will go if i don't ace the level the first time i'll just run it again really quick to ace it because the way to do it yeah i want to do it get it all done but uh yeah other than that uh i look forward to we'll be talking about that game more of course especially when sean hops into it but um the other game i've been playing i figured i'll save this one for last because i know it's on um midnight's games as well is the blob six beta the black ops six uh beta last weekend i haven't hopped into it this weekend at all because astro came out so i've been very obsessed with that and i've been busy with football all day uh these last few days but um yeah it's really fun it plays more like cold war than modern warfare so obviously that makes sense it's triarch again and it's it's a sequel to cold war so it makes sense that it plays the same other than that uh omni movement which isn't as terrible as I thought it was going to be, but it, there are some people who are getting very sweaty with it already, and it's getting kind of annoying. But uh, overall, this game is super fun. It's been, other than the the occasional maps when you get sweated by the nerds, because that just happens all the time, uh, it's in very, I've had more fun with this than I've had with any Call of Duty since Cold War. Um, I'm enjoying it way more than Modern Warfare 3 because right now you're not, run, you're not seeing Homeland or in fucking Starlight running around on the map. It's just army dudes so <laughs> i'm okay with that and it just it seems more grounded than the uh modern warfare 3 was and so yeah i'm really enjoying this i'm excited to, for to get the full drop i want to try the zombies even though they did the stupid open world zombies thing again i can't stand that I, I miss wave based and um the campaign i'm interested in i need to play the cold war one first but uh, yeah, it's playing really well. I'm enjoying it. I hope they add more to it. And that, but the thing, of course, also sucks is already cheating. I fucking like, why play a game? If you're just gonna cheat. Like, it, you're just proving you have no talent if you have to use cheats to win a game. Like, why bother? It's so annoying. But other than that, yeah, it's it's Call of Duty. It's more it's more fun than I've had re- in recent years with Call of Duty. So, uh, yeah, I'm enjoying it. I'll probably hop into it maybe a little bit this weekend. But Astro is kind of consuming my life right now so (laughs) all right good stuff um all right i'll get into mine so for me mine will probably be pretty quick um mine are usually pretty quick um so i am still playing games you're playing (laughs) right yeah (laughs) you don't play games actually yeah (laughs) what are you talking about i'm playing games um so i am still playing the witcher 3 and i still absolutely love it I am uh, for people who love and have played that game. Just so you know, I am. Uh, I'm getting real close to the end. I'm back on the island of Skellige or whatever, and I am uh, level 36, I think, and I'm just loving it. I'm. I think I'm getting kind of close, maybe like five hours, five seven hours to beating the main game, and then after that, I'm going to do the two DLCs. Um, I'm going to do the one that I can never remember the name for some reason, the blue one. <laughs> I, I just can't remember the name. I'm going to do that. And then afterwards, Blood and Wine, of course, is the big DLC that everyone says. That was the highest rated DLC of all time until just recently when um, the Elden Ring DLC, uh, the Shadows of the Erd Tree came out. And uh, it actually, it took the top spot. So 
Um, I'm really excited uh, about, you know, beating this game and playing these awesome DLCs. Um, according to how long to beat, I checked it out. Um, it looks like I still got like another, we're talking about another 40 to 45 hours left between finishing the game and these DLCs. Uh, which is why I don't always have the longest what we're playing sections, because these games just do not end. Um, but it's a phenomenal game. You know, the combat is insanely great. Um, the story, the characters, the choices that you get to make. The world is so dense and filled with fun stuff to do. If I had nothing else to play, like you could just play this game for so long because there's a lot of stuff that I'm not doing. Like there's a lot of stuff on the map and side quests and stuff that I'm just not doing because, that you know, time is not limitless um but yeah awesome game so that is the witcher 3 shout out to chris in australia who uh who we made our little deal for me to play this um and then moving on to what hodge was just talking about we got the black ops 6 beta i did play that last night with my boy debo dlb um and we played for a good three four hours last night we were we were we were grinding um, that game is incredibly sweaty. Holy shit, it's sweaty as fuck. Um, Call of Duty has like the worst, the thickest, the most sinister, devilish skill-based matchmaking known to man. And unfortunately, when you're playing with a 4KD player and when you're like a 2, 2 2.5KD player, um, the lobbies that you get are just non-stop sweat. Like... Uh, Hodge, you were talking about the movement wasn't so bad. Um, yeah, so you were talking about the movement wasn't so bad, but it, it has been bad in my lobbies. Like dudes have been doing the most insane shit that it's just like I've have dudes like diving over my head, doing like a 360 spin and then like gunning me down before I can even barely turn around to try to shoot at them. Like dudes are jumping uh, they're like sliding one way and then jumping to the other way while like pre-firing you around a corner. Like it's just insane and it's really hard to keep up with. And I'm not enjoying the movement, but not to be all negative. Um, I will say that I, I am liking the maps. Uh, the core gunplay does feel really good. Um, I feel like if it just didn't have this stupid movement, like we would have a really good shooter on our hands here. Um, my hope is, and my, and DOB was saying the same thing, my boy, is that maybe, maybe they'll give us like a playlist that doesn't have the advanced movement. That's kind of more like standard boots on the ground. And if so, I'm going to be, I'm going to be all over it. I think it's going to be awesome. Um, but yeah, black ops six beta, I'm going to play it more, um, maybe a little today, maybe a little tomorrow. Um, I am kind of enjoying it. But at the same time, it's been a sweat fest. Like I've been struggling um, just to go positive. Um, I had one game where I had 64 kills, which was really good. That was a great game. Um, but for the most part, man, it's just been really sweaty. I've only gotten one helicopter <laughs> um, kill streak wise. I choked one off of the highest streak. Um, yeah. So that's my Black Ops 6 thoughts and impressions. Um, Sean, you don't do you care about this at all? Are you going to play Blop 6 at all? Uh, probably not. My wife's playing it. She loved the beta. She she likes it. it. Nice. Yeah, she loved it. Um, yeah, no, uh, I've heard good things about it. People seem to be enjoying it. Uh, I know, I know you guys weren't big fans of like MW three or Hodge wasn't, but I know a lot of people did like that the Modern Warfare three. But I've I've heard great things about this. Some it looks to be one of the better Call of Duties in the last couple of years. So mm -hmm. hopefully it does well. I'm hoping people enjoy it. Hopefully it doesn't die like Concord. <laughs> rest in peace um yeah so black ops 6 that's the game i'm playing and i didn't really mention it here but i am still playing x defiant and i i am in love with that game like that game i do really good at so if black ops 6 doesn't hit for me i'm happy that i still have a shooter because we're really enjoying black ops 6 having dropping 40 50 kill games left and right and that game's a blast but uh that is what i am playing go ahead and pass the ball over to sean mason what you've been getting right. into sir all right, we're going to start off. Uh, I continued my journey of the South Park franchise. I actually did start watching South Park, by the way. I've watched the nice. first, like, yeah, me and Claire watched the first eight episodes of this show. It's pretty <laughs> funny. Uh, it's definitely, like, 90s humor, like, definitely at first. And I, oh. I can see it evolving, though. I can see it evolving. It, 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 it's grown on me. It's good. I'm loving it. Um, so I finished up Stick of Truth. Like, I was, I had just 
like right at the end of the game last episode finished it up i got the platinum um the game is awesome i love stick of truth like i said i love the combat the writing is hilarious uh, i've really as i've grown and played the games more and i played fractured butthole more um i've grown to like the characters a lot more i have my favorite i i still can't stand cartman like he's awful like he's an awful person it's funny because most people love cartman i, I, I don't like him I like Kyle a lot. I think Kyle's cool. I, I like I like I like Craig. Craig's awesome. <laughs> I, like I like Butters. Craig a lot. You like but I, I like Butters and Stick of Truth, but then when I played the Fractured Butthole, I didn't really like him that much anymore. Butters get he becomes more of a prominent character around like season six. Is that's okay. kind of that's because there's a plot line with Kenny where he's not their friend anymore, so they try and find a backup friend, and Butters joins the crew, and it's it's very funny at that point. But okay, yeah, it's um, he, he he grows as a character in the show, that's for sure. All right, interesting. Yeah, I was wondering because not all the characters from the game are like present yet, so I was like, yeah. oh, they probably just come in as we go. Yeah, like You're, um, Timmy and Jimmy don't come along for or Timmy's early on, but Jimmy doesn't come around until like season five or something like that. Jimmy's hilarious. Yeah. You're literally starting at season one, huh? That's like yeah. really, really yeah. old stuff. Which oh, I've been cool. watching. I've been watching the first season recently too. I, I how does it hold up? It's it's amazing. I don't care what anyone yeah, says. It's, it's hilarious. It's, I think it's funny. Yeah, it's yeah. so good. the the first The first eleven seasons of South Park are perfect. After that, it becomes hit and miss. But yeah, those first eleven seasons are perfect. Every episode makes me die laughing. I love that show yeah. so much. We, we are we are audibly la- like, and we're not like a big comedy like you know. And like we are audibly laughing and, and like dying and like sending each other clips like online. And <laughs> it's so um, good. yeah, it's great. But yeah, so stick of truth. I got the platinum. I really liked it. And I immediately hopped into the fractured butthole. And I, I still can't get over that title. It's so oh, it's so and they name drop it in like the game. And it's so like funny. But um, I am loving this game. I love the superhero trope like aspect like much like I'm enjoying it a lot. Like I love changing my costume. and I love how it doesn't affect your stats. It's more of like a oh, depending on what powers you have and the artifact, the um, not artifacts, the um. I can't remember what they're called. I'll just call them artifacts. I think they are called artifacts. Yeah, the artifacts cool. you equip affects your stats. And I love that. I actually am digging the com- like the, the combat as well, like the grid-based, more of a strategy, strategy-based strategy uh, combat rather than turn-based. I am loving it. I think it's awesome. Uh, I started off as a speedster, um, and I absolutely love like all the different powers. I, I beat the game, so I have I got to the point where you get all the classes, and it's pretty cool. But the speedster stat, there's one where you, if you press triangle, I'm playing on PlayStation, before, like, during your turn, you can take two turns at a time. And then they have, like, the slowdown, like, the super fart motion, where you can, like, pause the combat and run up and, like, hit hit the enemy. Or you can summon your past self, which is, like, the best thing ever. Um, I'm loving it. I love all the different characters. Like, um, they're so cool. Like, I love Super Craig. I think he's, I think he's so funny. Like... I think he's great. And then, oh, and then I learned that him and Tweak are like boyfriends now. And I'm going around collecting all these paintings, like these macaroni yeah. paintings of them. And at first I'm like, what the heck is going on? And then I put two into I'm like, they must get together in a later season. Mm-hmm. Um, it's so funny. Um, but yeah, I'm really enjoying. I love the plot. The plot is a lot crazier in the Fractured Butthole. Like it's like, like just so totally out there. Like I don't want to spoil it, but like Cartman's. Can I, can I do like a quick spoiler for the fractured butthole real quick? If it's like, a small one. Yeah, I'll give it like five seconds. Like um, Mitch Connor, like what the heck is that? Like <laughs> I was like, does he know? Like, and it's so fun. There's a part where another character decides to have Mitch Connor on them. And they're like, are you messing with me? No, you messing with me? I only admit I'm messing with you if you admit you're messing with me. And I'm like, what the heck? And then Santa Claus and Christmas. Is like Christmas like a huge thing in South Park? Oh, yeah. Especially in the old season, Santa Claus is a regular character. Him and Jesus, they're regular characters. On the okay, show. so yeah, yeah, I love. Okay, so I loved in Stick of Truth summoning Jesus. So he comes in with like the machine gun. <laughs> it's so funny. It's um, yeah, so in the second game, though, in the Fractured Butthole, it's so like to play in the hardest difficulty, you have to make yourself um, like black. Play mm-hmm. the hardest difficulty, and it's so fun. And then they have the whole like, are you a cisgender? Are you a male? Will you do you feel like you're male? And it's Mr. McKay or whatever the heck his name is. And he's <laughs> yeah. like, okay, 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 Mr. Mackey. Yeah. And then you come out, and no matter what you choose, like the the rednecks come and they're like, hey, we don't like your kind here. 
And it's like, <laughs> even if you're like, we don't like your cisgender kind. I don't care if you're a cis male. We don't like you. You're straight. We still don't like you. And I'm like, what is going on? And it's, it's just so, true. yeah, it's so funny. And um, I, like I said, I love the superhero tropes that they're doing. Like um, you can tell like all the different characters are trying to make a spoof off of. And it's like a totally like the Marvel civil war aspect is there with the, the freedom pals and the, the, um, coon and friends and they keep saying coon friends he's like no it's coon and friends <laughs> and it's like it's so funny and i am loving it um yeah and then your your pe- character's parents are like totally crazy it's so weird your backstory is bizarre that doesn't even doesn't even make sense cartman everyone's that happened to everybody no it hasn't it's just so it's so good i'm like so loving good. it and like i said i beat fractured butthole i like it better than stick of truth i think it's awesome the only thing i would say is this you can definitely tell it's a ubisoft game with the with the menus are set up in fractured butthole like it's so ubisoft with like just like the like the cruiser like the icons and like just the way the menus are set up but it's still phenomenal like i'm loving it like i said phenomenal i'm gonna get the platinum probably today probably um just gotta find some more of those macaroni pictures Right on. Yeah, I love South Park. South Park has a special place in my heart, especially uh, back in the day, because um, back when my brother used, was living with me back in Columbus, we had a tradition where we would make some food or get some food. And every single day we would sit down on the couch, eat our dinner, and we would watch one or two episodes of South Park. Just that it was a tradition. We always did it. And it was it was great times. Shout out to my brother. Love him. Um, but yeah, South Park is great. I have not really been staying up, though, with some of the newer seasons. I just haven't been watching it much. But uh, the bits and pieces I've seen are still pretty funny. So, all right. Oh, oh one more thing. I love Clyde as Mosquito, the Mosquito Man. He's so, mm-hmm. he's so good. He's, he's like a great, he's like my my go-to party. I usually use him. I use Call Girl because she's awesome. Mm-hmm. She's like the Call Girl, but she has all the phones. It's great. Um, and then I usually use Super Craig and myself. Sometimes I'll use um, I'll use Butters. Sometimes just sometimes Mister Chaos or Mister Yeah, his name's like Professor Chaos. Yeah. So I think it's so funny how like that in Stick of Truth, like <clears throat> there's like two different groups, but in this one there's still two groups, but like the characters have all switched sides and stuff. And it's it's just funny. It's a good time. I love it. Sorry, rambled about South Park. That's awesome. No, you're good. I can talk right. South Park all day. And then finally, midnight, you're going to be upset with me, but I tried and tried to play Skyrim, and I'm sorry, but this game is so dated, and I, I can't do it. Uh, I tried on PlayStation, very, very dated. The combat is, I think the combat's awful. Um, I don't think the writing's particularly well either, like for a Bethesda game, I find the Fallout game's writing to be so much better. Like when I'm talking mm. to character, I can't get into it with the characters. Like with Fallout, I'm like immediately drawn in. I'm talking to the I'm like loving. It. I'm constantly thinking about it. Skyrim, I can't do it. So I tried on PS5, and I'm like, maybe it runs better on Xbox. Boot it up, Claire's Xbox. Put on Skyrim. Same thing. Just didn't hit for me. I'm like maybe it will run better on PC. Go to the PC. Boot it up on PC. Same thing. I'm like, I just can't get into it. I tried you know, these mods that are supposed to be like quality of life mods didn't do it for me. And I just can't do it. So I played maybe four or five hours that the most is my most playthrough. And I just, I, I can't do it. I'm not having fun. So I'm not going to torture myself by playing it, by not having fun. And a lot mm. of people are like, Oh my God, Skyrim, it's the greatest thing ever. I think a lot of it might have to do, but I don't have the nostalgia for it. Like I can still go back into fall at new Vegas. And I don't care that it's like a buggy mess. Sometimes I still love it. And I think maybe a lot of it too is I've played Bethesda, other Bethesda games that have that have come out since Skyrim, and or Bethesda like games like The Outer Worlds and um, you know Fallout Four, and like I said, New Vegas, and it's just like I don't know, there's something about them that appeals to me much more. I, maybe it's the fantasy setting, which I, I usually like fantasy, but I'm not a big fantasy game guy, so that could be it. But I don't know, there's something about it that just I, it just doesn't draw me in, so. I'm sorry, but Skyrim is a no go for me. I'm sad. To, I'm sad to hear that. I mean, how far did you get, like story wise? Did you make it to White Run and meet the I Jarl? Met, I met the Jarl, yeah. Okay, because I feel like the story is pretty decent. Like, 
you I see. Know, I, I'm not like, you I get can't... attacked by a dragon. You have to escape. Yeah, like you get attacked you by the dragon. And... I'm like, I'm like, all right, okay. But I just, I can't get it. I don't think it looks good. I don't think it plays good. I, it feels well, clunky to play. To me, it feels very years clunky. Old, yeah. Well, no, but people like talk about it like it's like you know God's gift to Earth that it holds up so well that it's like the greatest thing since sliced bread. And I picked it up and I'm expecting these great things. And I'm like, I, I've played games that are, came out in the '90s that feel better than this. All right. Well, fair enough. Um, I'm not going to force you to play a game that you don't like. It wasn't even me that that forced you. It was Locke. If, actually, if you maybe, remember, it was Lockmore. Maybe I'll, you maybe I'll try it again. Maybe I'll try it again. Yeah, you played, had a bet with Locke that you guys were going to play Skyrim and he was going to play like Halo or something, which played. which randomly he suggested himself. Like you guys didn't even ask him to play Halo. He's like, I'll play Halo. He's <laughs> like, OK, should have made him play Kingdom Hearts. Um, yeah, that's what it up. Yeah, I've, I played it for about 15 hours and fell off of it. It's it's it, everything you said. I it, the gameplay. I'm not a fan of it. And it has it's well, of course, it's one of those games where if you forget to save and you do three hours of work and then die, you're fucked because you have to go back to that three hour spot. There's no checkpoints or anything. So it's it's yeah, I fell off of it. I'm happy people enjoy it. I'm sure it's a great product of its time, but I I don't like it. I've I've always I'm the same, though. I've always preferred the Fallout universe to Elder Scrolls. I think Fallout is so much more interesting. Um, so I've yeah. I'd rather go back and try Fallout 4 again than keep playing this, to be honest. Fallout 4, All good right. game. I love it. Yeah. It's okay. I'll just say for uh, for the Skyrim and the, the Todd Howard and the, the Elder Scrolls fans out there, let me go ahead and stand up, stand up for the game real quick. For the listeners out there who are, are deeply hurt by Sean's words, uh, Skyrim is a masterpiece, in my opinion. Um, it's not a masterpiece because of the combat. The combat is pretty pretty trash. It's pretty mid. I get it. Um, I basically, I would do like a one-handed weapon, like a sword or something. And in my other hand, I would do magic, like kind of shoot fire or kind of heal people. And you just kind of go through the caves and kill people. It's nothing riveting, uh, the combat. What's great about Skyrim is the in my opinion, the exploration, how stuff just kind of appears and there's a cave and it's like, oh, well, let me go in the cave and see what's in there. And you go in the cave and it's filled with bandits and you kill them. And then there's like a boss bandit at the end. And then there's a chest and in the chest, there's like a better weapon than what, what you had, maybe like a fr frost sword or something. That's pretty cool. Um, and then there's there's multiple different stories. It's not just the main story. You also have the fighters guild that you joined and there's a whole quest line for that um, where you're doing jobs to help out the people. Sean, I see you trying to come in. What's up? I was going to say, you could just replace cave with building, and you just describe Fallout. Right. Well, yeah, Fallout, it's yeah. the same developer. It's and I, that, that, like Hodge said, I think that just appeals to me more, that world. Like, the world. Maybe space and post-apocalyptic. I don't know. Maybe that just apply, appeals to me more. Well, that, that's fine. That's fine. And like I said, I'm not saying you're wrong. I just want to give Skyrim some love for me and the listeners out there. But um, they also have the Thieves Guild where like you actually go on missions and you have to break in and steal, be sneaky and steal stuff. And that's cool. And then they have the Dark Brotherhood where you have to actually in order to f find the Dark Brotherhood, you have to actually commit a murder and not get caught. And then when you go to sleep randomly one night, the dude shows up and recruits you into the Dark Brotherhood. And then you have these missions where you have to go assassinate people. Um, and it's just like, it's just really cool. Um, there's a whole civil war story that I don't know that you really got into. Um, so it's just an awesome world with branching cool stories. There's also the mages guild where they have like a whole tower where you go through and do quests with magic and stuff. And, um, it's just an awesome game, but I get it. Uh, it is dated for sure. Especially the combat is, is, is extremely dated. Um, and fair enough. I don't think it auto saves. So that's one thing. One thing you got to do if you're if you're a big RPG gamer, you got to save a lot and you have to have a lot of different saves. This is one thing that I do. I always have like eight to ten saves going at one time and I just cycle through and I overwrite the oldest one every time because you just never know when something could screw up or or you could not like a choice and you want to rewind back a little bit. Um, but anyways, uh, that's fair enough. I'm not going to beat you up uh, for not liking it, Sean. I'm not going to yell at you and say you have to finish it. I don't I don't care. Um, maybe. Maybe Elder Scrolls Six in like four years will be uh, the one that gets you because that should be more modern and uh, you know much better gameplay probably, um, and I think it will be great. I think what? you're being a little optimistic with four years. <laughs> no, like I think it'll, I think it'll be I think it'll be four years. I don't think it's going to take nearly as long as uh, Starfield because they're not create. It's just going to be one world. It's not a thousand planets, and they don't have to create all these new systems. It's not a new IP. Everything's existing. They just got to modernize it and make it. 
Now I get why you lose your parlays so much. <laughs> All right. Uh, but anyway, so that was Skyrim. Uh, Sean, do you have anything else you want to say about your games or anything? No, I think we should move on to some dormant franchises we'd like to see come back. Yeah, dun, 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 segway. Concord. That's, my That's yeah, Concord. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, how, let me just say, like, it sucks for the developers of Concord, but how lucky uh, for for PlayStation that they had Astro Bot come out right when it did, because it completely washed away the bad taste in everyone's mouth. Like, they had, like, this pretty big public failure, but then they immediately drop, like, an, an insanely great game that everyone's just like, Astro Bot, yay! People have already forgotten about Concord, kind of. So, great timing for them. Yeah, great. All right, boys, we're going to do it. We're going to go ahead and jump into our main topic of discussion today. It is going to be dormant franchises. So the rules for this is this has to be a game or a game series that has not had a game in at least eight or so years. We said and ten years. It is not, we, we said eight at one point, and that's what I did on mine. I'm sorry. It's not, um, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, that's what I did. I don't know. Some of them are more than 10, though, but not all. But anyway. Don't matter. And where there's not another game already announced and in the works. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to go five through one. These are not necessarily in any particular order. These aren't really super ranked or anything. We're just going to list some games. And we're going to start with Sean Mason. Are you ready, sir? I am. So I am going. So my order. So oh, before I go, I'm just going to say to the audience, these are games that these aren't my like five games that I want back like right now, because like I didn't obviously like resistance. That's a layup. Infamous. That's a layup. I've already talked about that enough. I don't need to talk about that anymore. So I've kind of listed games out that um i would like to see back that i really haven't had a chance to talk about so i'm gonna go in the order that the um the franchise that i'm talking about is the like the most the, is the most recent one to have a game in their franchise and that is this is gonna surprise some people that is sim city that franchise sim <laughs> city Ooh. um yeah so i'm a big sim city fan like i loved the games on pc specifically sim city 2000 like that was i played so much of that game just building cities and you know, going around and then playing the act of God, you know, lightning strikes of, um, you know, hurricanes, tornadoes, basically destroying the city. Um, I really liked it. It was like a city builder. I had never really played anything like it. I remember I got it at a book fair and I remember just, it was my sister's book fair because I was still like four years old. I remember playing it and I played a lot on PC and my sister had the Sims and what you could do is you could import Sims into your Sim City game and then you could like, you know, see them in the city which was kind of cool. I just like building the cities, you know, figuring out like, oh yeah, you know, you're losing a lot of money in the town because there's too many roads. You know, you got to change the roads up or, you know, you need some highways because people can't drive anywhere. They can't leave the city or just seeing like car accidents happen because you didn't, you forgot to put a stop sign up or you forgot to put, you know, you, you didn't make an intersection correctly. And I just, I really got into it. And I really, SimCity 2000 was like my big, big one. Um, I played some of the later ones, but the the latest was that release was 2014, and I didn't play it. But to my understanding, that game was horrendous and like a total failure. But yeah, Sim City, I would love to see like a classic, like just rebranded as Sim City. Right on, right on. Yeah, I played a little Sim City back in the day. Those games were always fun, very complicated but fun. Um, which that reminded me just a quick sidebar i used to play an adjacent type of game series a lot that i loved was the uh, roller coaster tycoon games yep roller coaster um, tycoon yeah that was always fun too. making a theme yeah. park and yeah we played a lot um, of that we played a lot of roller coaster tycoon there was zoo tycoon as well there's mm-hmm. a lot of those tycoon games yeah we played a, that was like a that was like a different style of game that i actually i it was like the sims game my sister was really into them so she would get like all of them and then i happened to Hop on to Roller Coaster Tycoon and um, mm-hmm. Sim City. There was another Roller Coaster Tycoon type game, but it wasn't called Roller Coaster Tycoon. It was weird, and it used to crash on my PC all the time. It. Go I don't. On. Maybe this might be the game you're talking about. I was just thinking about this when you said Sim City. I was obsessed with this game as a kid on PC. It was called Theme Park World, and you played. Let me look it up. You played. It was basically like a little kid theme park. It was like just a kid version of Roller Coaster Tycoon, basically. Yep, that was it. Yep, that was yep. it. I was yep. obsessed with this game when I was game, a kid. Game used to crash all the time on my PC. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was called but Theme yeah. Park World. I loved it. 
Yeah, these like these like sim building games, they're like sneaky fun, and you can lose a lot of time just like sitting here and being like, all right. Oh, but yeah. the best part of SimCity was making the cities, and then like you could destroy them and be like, well, I wonder what's gonna happen now. There comes and I, oh my god, an apocalypse is happening, and the yeah, it just it was a good time. <laughs> SimCity. Oh yeah. All right. Great pick. Uh, that's a really good pick. Haven't thought of that series in a long time. Um, Hodge, you are up next, sir. Yeah. I didn't realize that it had been that long since the SimCity game had come out. I, I figured they were just cranking them out every year still. <laughs> I had no idea. But uh, yeah, my game. So the first one I'm going to go with is the obvious one. Everyone's going to know I want this one back. It's I'm counting it because I the, the series ended in 2000 as far as I'm concerned is Spyro. Um, the original trilogy is obviously, as I said, it's my favorite trilogy of all time, but I want a fourth one. I'm including it also because there were rumors. Some YouTuber said they knew a fourth one was being made and then, but I'm including it because they may have been thinking of that game that was just announced that it was canceled was that crash bandicoot and Spyro game. And which, yeah, I feel exactly the same, Sean. I, if that had come out, I, I would have lost my mind. And of course, they canceled it. And so that really pisses me off. So I want a straight up Spyro 4, the same way Crash Bandicoot did, where it was like, all the other games don't count. This is a sequel to the third one that came out back on PlayStation 1. I want that same thing with Spyro, where it's like, nope, this is the fourth one. All that other crap doesn't count. <laughs> this is the fourth one falling up. You're the dragon. So I want this so badly. I will pay all of the money to play this game. So please make it happen someday. But yeah, that'll be my first choice of IPs that needs to return. Phil Spencer, you have heard us. We want Crash and Spyro back. Thank you. Please. Please, please, please. <laughs> Wasn't Toys for Bob rumored to be working on a uh, Spyro game, or am I making that up in my mind? Yeah, I, but it was also before they got dumped by Microsoft. So it's, it's just there's so much around it that is so unsure in terms of cancellation. That's why I'm kind I'm including it with a little bit of an asterisk because I know we did we didn't want to do ones where like games are rumored to be in development because there's just been so much going on with toys for Bob and hearing that that one game is canceled and all that. So I'm like, as of right now, I'm not taking anything for at their word. So I'm just kind of saying, eh, Spyro's dead right now and it needs to come back. I'm just going to say the way that uh, Microsoft has talked and Phil Spencer, I don't know what to believe to be honest. Like, so I, I honestly, I, I don't think we're ever going to see crash and Spyro again for maybe not ever, but, I don't think we're going to see them for a long time. Well, if they're smart after seeing Astrobot launch, like we need to get these in development right now. If they were smart, I'm going to make, but... I'm going to make a prediction right now. <laughs> Write it down. Toys for Bob is working on a Spyro game right now, and it will come out within the next three to four years and it will be co-published no, by that. Xbox and it will be multi-platform. So there you go. Well, Xbox it's coming a console Mark it down. So. IGN's going to pick up our podcast now. I know. Who knows? Rumors are still um, that the game's going to come out and it will be multi-platform. And it's going to be amazing. Down, it's going to be a 99 out of 100. It's going to be insane. <laughs> They're going to let you. It's going to feature Mario and Crash. Hell so, yeah. <laughs> dear listeners, you remember when, when it's announced in three years, just remember that Midnight told you on Games Over Plastic episode number 16, mm-hmm. Spyro is in development and it is coming. All right, boys. <laughs> let's go ahead and move on to my games. I also tried to mix it up a little bit, Sean. I don't want to come out here like a broken record and say the same games all the time like I often do just because I have so much love for these these franchises and these studios. But I kind of branched out a little bit. I got some stuff here that maybe you wouldn't expect, Um, but not this first game, though. Uh, With number five, I do have Jade Empire. Now, Jade Empire was a 2005, 2006 ish Xbox original game from my favorite developer of all time, Bioware. This was their follow-up to Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Now, Jade Empire is an awesome game. I actually beat it last year. I went back and replayed it on the Xbox Series X, and I beat it. And it it didn't hold up as well as I thought it would, but it was still phenomenal. Um, It's a martial arts role-playing game set in a unique world where there's like all this intrigue with the emperor um and i don't want to get into a lot of spoilers or anything but basically you have to kind of save the kingdom from a threat um and the combat is is like a fun martial arts action um of course you get to make choices throughout the story there's romance um there's you know there's some uh 
some nice some nice ladies you can romance. Um, it's just a great game. It's a good time. Um, it was it was rated quite highly, I believe, on Metacritic and stuff. People really did enjoy this game. Um, and I would love to see a new Jade Empire, like a like a sequel or a spinoff in that universe, I think would be awesome. Um, so, yeah, Jade Empire. I, I know that Sean and and Hodge have not played this game. I'm pretty sure. Um, had you even heard of this game or seen anything? Hodge? See, this is one of those games I've heard of as like when people talk about the OG Xbox is like you. This game mm-hmm. was on the OG Xbox. Like, and it's like I said, I've never owned an OG. It was just over a friend's house. I play Halo 1, Halo 2, basically. And so this is a game I'd only ever heard of. So I'm looking at it now and I'm like, oh, I'm just getting straight up Shang-Chi vibes from this. And I'm just like, this looks pretty sweet, but it's mm-hmm. not a game I'd ever go back to because I just if I don't have it's that same thing. If I don't have the nostalgia for it, I don't know how well it's going to hang. Uh, uh, oh, it's really dated. <laughs> yeah. So I figured it's not one I'd ever go back to. But yeah, that'd be cool if that it looks cool. So if they rebooted mm-hmm. it or of some sort, that'd be really cool. I think that'd be Look, it looks sweet. It was a super cool story with a lot of like intrigue and backstabbing and stuff. And it was a really cool like Asian Kung Fu setting with the emperor. And um, it was awesome. And I, I think going back to this game is rough because it's super dated. Like, Sean, you thought Skyrim was dated. This game, this game's dated. Um, but if they came out with a modern one, I think it would be it would be awesome. So that's my hope is going to be Jade Empire. Uh, Sean, if you have any thoughts on that, I don't expect that you do. Um, but otherwise, no, I, I, um, good yours. I remember the box art a lot because when we'd go to Blockbuster a lot, I would just, I, even though I didn't have an Xbox, I would look through the Xbox section and I'd always see Jade Empire. So I never played it or anything. All right. You want to go ahead and get into your number four, my friend? Yes, my number four. This game, last entry we got was 2010, but not many people played the 2010 version. It is the Golden Sun, the JRPG series Golden Sun. So uh, the first two games were uh, Game Boy Advance games. They came out in 2001 and 2002, I think, or 2000 and 2001, whatever that is. They are turn-based JRPG games, and I absolutely adored these games. Um, The story is so cool. It's basically, uh, you're basically finding these, they're called like jins. They're like summons, and you're trying to find these ancient, um, like, magic and basically what it is is you're on like a journey and there's an antagonist group that's trying to use them for bad and you're trying to use them for good and you're trying to take down like the bad guys and it takes place in like this world called wayward um and the main character's name is isaac in the first game and you have like a party of four and you're running around and you all get different jinn powers which is like summons and they affect like your attack and your magic and skills it's a classic turn-based rpg but the story is really cool i don't really want to spoil like anything about the story because the story is pretty like impactful especially as a kid like um i absolutely just i played through golden sun one and two so many times they actually just got re-released on the switch like the game boy advance like expansion whatever that is on the the um expansion pass um they're really good the combat's smooth writing's really good they did a really good job trans um localizing it to the american audience because um, I guess on the Japanese version, it, it 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 translates very differently than the way that they translated to the English. So they local they did a good job localizing it. And one really cool aspect is if you play the second game, you play as the an- like the main characters of the second game are the antagonists of the first game. Hmm. So it's it, it is pretty cool. And then the last entry was in 2010. They released a DS version of it, um, and it takes place like 30 years later. You play as like the um, like the ki- like the um, the kids of like the main characters from the first game. It's a good game. I really highly suggest playing it. It's a, like I said, classic turn-based uh, JRPG for the Game Boy Advance. And it's sprite-based, so it's like, it looks like beautiful. It looks like a Super Nintendo, like Final Fantasy Super Nintendo game. All right. Right on. I have nothing to say about that one. Never played it. Uh, Hodge? That's, it's one that I have always... It was one of those that I saw as a kid, and it was one of those where I didn't have the money, but I always wanted it. So yeah. that logo is always ingrained in my head. When someone says Golden Sun, I imagine that logo with the little sunburst around the the word sun, and I I recognize that logo so it's so ingrained in my brain. But I never played it. I didn't know it was added to Expansion Pass. Yeah, it uh, just got added like a couple months ago. Both how, of them. How long are they? They're not long enough. It's like it's from that era where JRPGs, like a long JRPG, was like twenty hours. This is like fifteen yeah. hours. Okay. And um, yeah, maybe I'll the only reason why I got into it is my neighbor had the first game, and he let me borrow it, 
And like, I fell in love with it. And then I realized, and then he's like, oh yeah, there's a sequel. Literally begged my dad to go to like Walmart and get the second one and be like, <laughs> fine. So he went and got it and it was so good. They're so, and it looks gore. It's still, the graphics hold up so well. Yeah, I do. I love this. I loved the uh, Game Boy Advance, like the the we've talked about them before with the Legacy of Goku games. Those yeah, graphics it, are so. It, it so looks nostalgic. like a Legacy. Like it looks like a Legacy of Goku. That's literally like, what yeah. it looks like to me. Yeah, yeah I'm looking at it, it right now. Like Google, yeah, and I, the turn based yeah. combat is really good too. It, it's similar to Final Fantasy VII. Oh, nice. Yeah, this. Looks I think cool. you'd like it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to try and I'll need to. Yeah, because I I've been playing Prime still a little bit. I didn't talk about what we've been playing, but yeah. So I was kind of looking through the expansion passes now, and there's so many old games I loved. That so many there. good games on there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I need to I need to play this sometime. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, oh, I'm up next, aren't I? All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my next one is one that is a criminally underrated game that only. I, ironically this is the other another og xbox game is fusion frenzy if mm. if they brought this back they could they'd make a mint it just it's basically just mario party but on xbox it's different characters but it's the same thing it's just mini games having fun and it this game is still it was in college it was one of those games where me and my buddies would just boot up uh, it on Xbox 360 just play some Fusion Frenzy while we have some beers before going out and it's such a perfect party game that I don't know why Nintendo is the only one still doing party games like I mean we have the Jackbox Party Pack games which are really fun too but like we need these couch co-op like uh uh, party games they they need to make a comeback they're so much fun everything's gone to online and fusion frenzy was so i mean it's not mario party mario party's the goat obviously it's way better than fusion frenzy but if xbox had a fusion frenzy you know game it would it would sell gangbusters people would love it playing these party games again so i would love to see fusion frenzy make a comeback so i played fusion frenzy once in my fusion yeah, fusion frenzy once in my life um because Claire had it as a kid for Xbox. Mm -hmm. So I would I would try to beg her to play Mario. She hates Mario Party. Like she can't stand it. <laughs> and so she would she she sat through it and played it. But one day she's like, you know what? We're gonna play Fusion Frenzy. So I booted it up and we, we played through it. It's not bad. I go, I think it's much more of a crash bash than a uh, Mario Party. <laughs> Similar to Crash Bash, if you know what Crash Bash is. Uh -huh. Um But yeah, no, it is good. I think uh if they made a modern version with like um you know now that we've, you know, there's been so many par Mario Party games since then, you can kind of scale it towards similar to that, but make it a little different. I think it would do well, especially because people are always looking for party games. Especially, yeah. yeah, like you said, how popular the Jackbox games are. Yeah, there's it's so much fun to get still get together with people. Thankfully, we're from that generation that, that had couch co-op. So we're always mm -hmm. wanting to get together with your friends and just play some party games. They're so much fun. Heck yeah. And shout out to um, the Shrek Super Party. Now, that's the real party oh game right there. <laughs> Shrek Super Party. Uh, now, I never played Fusion Frenzy, but uh, definitely iconic game. I remember the box art and stuff. Um, looks like a lot of fun. Party games are awesome. Um, well, you know, I, I did come from the couch co-op era. It was a mm -hmm. lot of fun. Yeah, the the my favorite couch. I've talked about this before, but Chef's Lo South Park Chef's Love Shack is my favorite like Mario Party type game. It's it's insanely <laughs> fun from PlayStation One and N sixty four. I love it. It's awesome. But yeah, a Fusion Frenzy is my choice for this. All right. So moving on to my number four pick here. Um, so obviously, I'm throwing aside the real obvious ones like uh, Infamous and a core fallout game. I mean, obviously we want those. Um, so I'm not going to mention those. This one here, I did mention this game one time on our sports episode, but I haven't really mentioned this before, but I so much loved back in the day, MLB 2K series. I know Sean's a hater. Uh, Sean's not a fan, but the MLB 2K Crap. series. I love, the, I love the show. MLB the show is a phenomenal, well-made game. But back in the day, 2K was the best, in my opinion. They had like the My Player mode. They had the best pitching system, like I talked about before, with the analog style pitching. Um, I threw a perfect game in that. It was awesome. Actually, I just lied. I misremembered. It was the show. It was the show that I threw a perfect game in. But anyway, MLB 2K was awesome. 
Um, I just absolutely fell in love with the pitching. Um, that analog system that they had has not been replicated. Um, there is an analog system in MLB The Show now, but it's just it doesn't feel the same. Um, I really genuinely almost felt like I was out there throwing pitches. The way that they had the motions where it kind of made sense with like a curveball would be like, ooh, you know, stuff like that. And how you had to time it, like as you're doing the motion, the circle would expand. And if you'd have to get it just right in order to get like the perfect accuracy and velocity and stuff. It was an awesome game. I really enjoyed it. My cat really enjoyed it. MLB 2K, bring it back. They're not going to, but uh, I would love to see that. Um, and my next three games are going to be ones that I don't think I've ever really talked about. So that's going to be exciting. So I almost included MVP Baseball, which is like another beloved baseball game from the mid 2000s. 2K lasted until 2K 13. But no, I hear I joke around about 2K being bad. It's just a joke. Um but I hear, you know, you want pair. I would love if all sports games had like multiple different. It just competition makes the games better, which is it awesome. Um, I have a question. Do you remember? The, did you play all the 2K games up until the last one? Uh, I think so. Yeah, because I remember 13, the million dollar challenge they used to do. Remember yeah. that? Uh, yeah, the last one was 2K13 had David Price on it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, with know, the rage. What with the Rays? Yeah, with the Rays. Yeah, yeah, with the Rays. Um, which is funny because he got traded that year in the middle of the season. <laughs> funny. Um, but yeah, I awesome sports games are fun. Absolutely loved Except it for Madden. Dude. Yeah, Madden. Madden is just. I've actually been watching for some reason. YouTube has been recommending me some Madden videos, and it's got like catchy titles about people like raging or talking shit. So I watch it here and there. And dude, that gameplay is so imbalanced and broken. Like, there's like no defense. Like these games are so high scoring, which is broken play. It's supposed to be anyway. a sim. It's supposed to be a simulation game. It so isn't. No. All right, Sean, you are up next, my friend. Number three. All right, my number three pick is. I wonder if I, Hodge might play these games. The Wario Land series. There's uh, five Wario Land games. Actually, six, because it's one of the Virtual Boy. But um, Wario Land 1, which was like a Super Mario Land 3 Wario's Land. It's kind of weird. No, Super Mario Land 2. I don't know. One of the Wario Land games is a Super Mario Land game. But then they made its own Wario Land game. And this, these Wario Land games on the Game Boy, specifically 3 and 4, 4 was on the GBA, they are some of the best platforming that I've, like, played on like the on the game boy and game boy advance um the way that wario moves is so different than mario it's not it was nothing like i've ever played before because you know the typical 2d platformer you know you're running jumping you know trying to achieve a goal in this game it was like collecting coins and it created alternate endings that depending on how many coins you got like wario's castle would be different at the end which was so cool you could like burst through walls because wario's bigger uh he had weird power-ups that sometimes would hurt him like one of the power-ups he would catch on fire and he would run around like this, like back and forth because his pants were on fire. But then at the end, you had a, 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 you had to time it perfectly that um, when it stopped, it would like explode and that would like blow up like a section of the map or would melt some ice for you to go down. Uh, I really enjoyed these games. They were just classic, like I said, classic platformers that played so different than Mario and the power ups were different. Uh, the last one we got was on Wii, which is Wario Land Shake It, which is a phenomenal game. The only, only problem with the game is that in order to jump up and like Wario had like a butt slam that could help crack things. The only way to do it on the Wii though, is you had to like shake the controller like that. And that got so annoying because that is such a crucial part of the game. But the Wario Land games are fantastic. I can't believe they stopped making them or just like, you know, haven't made one in a while, especially because Wario is such a beloved character in the Mario franchise, that Wario guy. I think it's because they went to the more of the party game style with the WarioWare games. But yeah, Wario Land fantastic games i like i said three and four in particular really stand out to me four was on the gba like i said three was the last game. it was a pure game boy color game and it looked beautiful some of those game boy color games are beautiful but yeah wario land todd have you ever played wario land i briefly had played it once but i never owned any of them i can't even remember where i played it it was very brief though so i don't really remember anything about it <laughs> oh. they were they were good like i said they were they were very different platformers and you know how platformers today like they don't have a live a life counter anymore it's more of like you just die mm-hmm. you come back and you kind of like lose coins or something warrior land was doing that back in the 90s so mario odyssey did not do it first warrior land did <laughs> well there you go always stealing all that right shit. 
Hodge, yeah. you have any thoughts about Wario Land? Otherwise, get into your number three. No, wow. I don't have anything <laughs> anything else to add. But um, my third game, I was this one was the one where if we were doing ten years, I was cheating because it came out in twenty fifteen. But we all know it's never going to make its return, and it makes me sad. Is the Order eighteen eighty six? Uh, it was a game that was not perfect by any means. Of course, we've talked about this. The graphics were amazing. The plot was awesome. The gameplay was not very good and a lot of QTEs, but it was a world that deserved to be expanded upon and the studio being shut down. And, you know, basically once they were bought by meta in the first place, you, you knew dreams of this returning were dead. So, we're never going to see Order 1887 or Order 1986 or whatever the fuck they'd call it, but it it's never going to come back, and it makes me sad because even though it wasn't a great game, it deserved way better than where it's never going to return now. So, yeah, that's my choice. All right. Sean, did you play that? Uh, no, but I own it because Poot... Poot sent it to me. Shout out to Poot. He's a great Shout player. out to Poot. Poot. Um, he sent it to me, and I still have to play it. Uh, I've heard really good things. I think I would dig it. Uh, I heard it's like the set, like the the parts of gameplay there actually are like really good. Like it controls really well, it's and it's, it's it's like a cover yeah. third base, cover based third person shooter. And it it is a shame that they didn't get a chance to make a sequel. Like it would have been cool. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm up. All right, so my number three, I'm trying to think because I feel like Hodge is going to have this on his list. So do I want to just delay this? That way when Hodge mentions it, then I'm, I go after Hodge. You know, I could just organically talk about it too. Um, I'm not sure though. It's up to you. Screw, screw it. I'm going to do it now. My number three is going to be the one and only, one of the best first person shooters ever made. From the Call of Duty developers that moved on to Respawn Entertainment. Is this on your list, Hodge? It's going to be Titanfall. It, um, was, it was going to be, but I removed it. Okay. okay. I, I thought okay. that's okay. like, when I I was like Hodge will probably have this. Yeah. But, you can go. You'll have I'll, something I'll, to say. Yeah, I'll get to it when you're when you're done. You go. Through, you spit your bars first. You could. So Titanfall cook. is phenomenal. One of the best shooters ever made. Freaking awesome game. Amazing gunplay. Really fun traversal on the map. Like you got like some kind of advanced movement, but not too much. Bit of wall running. Um, the Titans dropping from the sky, getting in the Titan, beating the crap out of people, gunning them down, missling them down, Titan on Titan fights, jumping on the back of the Titan as a pilot and shooting at their core and stuff. And then maybe they got the they they unleash the smoke or something to try to kill you and get you off their back. Dude, it was just awesome. What a great game. Um, I barely played Titanfall 2, which is sad. I, I really I don't know why. Um, for some reason, like me and my crew were just playing different stuff. We played Titanfall 1 a lot. I heard Titanfall 2 was even better. Um, and that's kind of something that one of these days I think I need to go and play. Um, but they need to bring back Titanfall. I would love a Titanfall 3. It would be so fun. I'd be all over it, especially with the state of Call of Duty right now where it's just I'm not loving it like I used to. Um, I think Titanfall could slide right in there and really find a good home. Um, but they seem to be really focused on making Star Wars games and Apex Legends. So I don't know if we're going to get Titanfall, but what do you guys think about that? Yeah, I was uh, uh, I was really close to including it. Uh, the only reason I didn't is because it, the I could have I could have included it, but it's technically a universe that's still alive through Apex. They are a shared universe. I know it's not the same. Uh, but, and they did announce, didn't they say that they canceled Titanfall three? Uh, wasn't it like in development and they canceled it or something? Yeah. So there was rumors. Yeah. I was close to including it. I didn't, but yes, I do. I would kill for a Titanfall three. I loved the first one. I put days and days of play time into it. The second one, I only played the campaign. I didn't play online very much, but the campaign is really freaking good too. It's only like five hours long. It's so good. Um, I would love to see Titanfall three, but yeah, I did not include it. I just kind of, it barely missed it. It was an honorable mention on my list, but yeah, I would, I would kill to see Titanfall three. 
Yeah, I just remembered why I didn't really play much Titanfall 2 is because freaking EA killed it. They dropped it in the middle of Battlefield and Call of Duty, right? Didn't they? It was released. Like, like literally, like right one there. And, Yeah, Battlefield 1 came out, then they released Titanfall, and then Call of Duty came out. Like within a month or two span. Like, it's ridiculous. Yeah, they, um, they, they sent it to die. Yeah, they suck. Screw you, EA, you bastards. Mm-hmm. No. Uh, Sean, any bars on Titanfall? And then you're up next. From what I've heard, so many people love this series, and there's so much like so much like we need Titanfall three, we need Titanfall three, we need Titanfall three. I would hope that at some point they can make a Titanfall three, even just sell the IP to somebody else. Yeah, yeah. you need respawn. Yeah, I was gonna say respawn is the reason why that game is special. It is the game. They got the magic. The gameplay is so good. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't trust it with anyone else because I don't even trust any of the Call of Duty studios anymore. I, but Titanfall one and two were oh, beautiful beautiful games mr mason what is your number two all right number two it is custom robo this series was a japanese mech fighting game series uh there was a couple games in japan that came out we didn't get an entry here till 2004 on the gamecube um this was like i remember this was a game that i rented and i loved it so much i beat it in the one week rental period i had and then even though i beat it i still bought it like I bought it after, like, this game is amazing. And basically what it is, is you are this unnamed hero character, and you're traveling around, like, an overworld map. And uh, it's in, like, full 3D, but, like, it's on, like, rails, like, the map's on rails. And you can go to, like, certain locations, and you just go into the um, area, and then you have, like, some dialogue that goes back and forth. And then you just fight someone, and before the fight, you each customize your robot. And like as you go, you get more better progression. And in the fighting area, it's like it's like a it's like a fighting arena, like a full 3D fighting arena with mechs, and you're just fighting in these like robot mechs. And it is so much fun. I love this game. I love like progressing. Like each fight, you get to you would um, obtain like extra parts for your robot, and then each you know each time you would improve your robot. And I really enjoyed it. It was so cool. It was a GameCube game. I had never really played a mech type game. I was into mechs as a kid from like anime, but I had never played like a mech game other than this one arcade game I used to play. And I don't even know what it's called. Um, But it was fun. There was like 25 or 30 battles you went through for the story mode. And then you could play like multiplayer and you could fight your friend. And um, in the multiplayer mode, uh, it was split screen, but in the multiplayer mode, like you got access to parts that you, you didn't get in the main story. And overall, it was a really good time, and it, it, it just encouraged you to keep playing it because you could get better parts depending on how you fought. And I liked it. And then they came out with a – well, not second one. The second one in the U.S. came out a few years later on the DS, and it, it was a, and it had Wi-Fi, so it was sick because me and my friend would play against each other like from like different houses. and We were like, oh, my God, this is so cool, even though it was probably like a little so laggy. And then since 06, we haven't seen it. Not even – Japan hasn't even got a release of it, which is crazy because – I'm shocked that like it was so popular in Japan. Like there was three different N64 games that came out within like a year and a half of each other. It was wild. And they had a GameCube version before us. And then we finally got a GameCube version. So yeah, Custom Robo. Such a good game. I loved it. Hodge, you're muted. Why did it mute? Anyway, uh the sorry about that. I've literally never heard of this game. <laughs> so it was, it's a very obscure. It's a very obscure GameCube game. Literally, I had never heard of it either. And then I was in a blockbuster and I saw it. And I'm like, oh, mech. It's a mech. It, I'm, I'm a Dezoids. The the mech game I remember playing the most was Zone of the Enders, the Kojima game. I loved that game, but I've yeah, I've never <laughs> never heard of this one. So I yeah, mean, it it was. It'd be cool if they it, like brought I said, it back and rebooted it, let a new audience find it, I guess. But Yeah, it was, like I said, it was a random game I randomly found, and I just fell in love with it. I thought it was so cool. I, and it was like, when I bought it, I rented it probably in 2006, and when I bought it, it was like $10. So I was like, mm-hmm. this is awesome. So nice. cool. Yeah, I've and the, never heard of that either. Yeah, and the art style is very anime, so. Huh. Loved it. Yeah. Right. Awesome right. Robo. Hodge. All You're right. Up. My next one is Sly Cooper. Uh, I loved this trilogy when it dropped back on the PS2. The first one is still my favorite. Uh, I need to play it. I did buy it on PlayStation, but I've been getting distracted with more and more games coming out because we're at that time of year that I haven't been able to jump into it. But uh, this game, it was supposed to have, you know, a, a TV show and a movie that never came out and 
I feel like they've just let the franchise die. I didn't they I think they had a fourth one at some point. Yeah, they had a fourth one and they tease a fifth one in it. Yeah, and then it never yeah, I never played the fourth one. Uh but it's good. Yeah. It's good. Oh, is it? Yeah. I I just I, it was one of those where I heard it didn't age or play as well, so I didn't but I don't know, maybe one day I'll play it. But yeah, I love this this series. It's just such a cool I love stealth games. Um like the Splinter Cell games are some of my favorite. That could actually have been on my list, but I don't know when the last one came out, but uh, yeah, I loved this. It was just a, it was a platformer stealth game. Like that's two of my favorite genres. I like going, like I'm the kind of person with any game. I'm going to go stealth until I'm caught. Then I go guns blazing, obviously, because that's what you do. But I always try and finish things stealth. Like when I was clear in Spider-Man, when I'd clear out a base, I'd always try and take everyone out silently so they couldn't raise the alarm and, I I do that for any game that has stealth. So I loved that about Sly Cooper, and it was it was a it was a fun, cartoony version of a of a genre you never see that in. It's usually some serious stealth, super spy game or whatever, not a raccoon stealing stuff. <laughs> like yeah, so I don't know. I love Sly Cooper. I'd love to see it return. <coughs> Shout out to Bentley. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sean, do you have anything you want to say about Sly yeah, Cooper? Yeah, I, I really like Sly Cooper. It was my, of the, the big three, you know, 2D platformers of that PS2 era, Sly was my second favorite behind Ratchet, but it was way ahead. Like, I hated Jack when I was when I was younger. I've grown to like Jack a little bit more, but Sly was way higher than Jack. It was, like, right behind Ratchet. I loved the art style. I thought it was so cool. It was so cartoony, and I thought they nailed, like, it looked like a cart, like, to me, like, when you're looking back at it, you're like, oh my gosh, this looks like it could be, like, a TV show cartoon. Mm -hmm. It was so cool, and I remember, uh, the first time I experienced it was at my cousin's house. She was playing it, and I just was like, what is this? Sly Cooper, like, you're a raccoon running around trying to steal things, and the story does get really dark, too, with, like, you know, stuff happens. Yeah. Characters are in a wheelchair. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Yeah, it's a good game, and I highly encourage playing the fourth one. Too bad it's, um, trapped on the ps3 uh, um that's probably why i didn't play because i bought a ps3 near the end of its life cycle yeah. so i didn't it, play but it. yeah it's a good game and like i said they tease a fifth one at the end and it's like come on 12 years later yeah i was debating putting jack and daxter on here but sly cooper isn't it doesn't get the bars it deserves compared like a lot of people say bring back jack and daxter but naughty dog is now the the sad dad emulator game uh studio so it's there. It's just not the same studio. So a lot of people are kind of giving up on Jack and Daxter from Naughty Dog, but Sly Cooper isn't stuck at a studio that re- would refuse to do it. So I don't know. I, I would love to see Sly Cooper return. But anyway, who's next? All right. Moving on. I think I'm next. Uh, my number two is going to be a little known strategy real time strategy game that I used to play so much and I used to love. And that is the command and conquer series. Um, I used to play this game all the time, way back in the day on the PlayStation. Um, the first command and conquer came out. First of all, they had like actual video cutscenes, which was nowadays kind of cringe and corny looking, but at the time, super cool. Um, you had GDI versus Nod. Um, I really got into like a role playing aspect. I think I mentioned this once where like as a young kid, I would like load up a Humvee with like six soldiers and then I would pull into like a little village on the map and I would unload the six soldiers and then I would move them to different points of the village and I'd be like, we're securing this village and saving and protecting the civilians and stuff. Dude, it was great. Uh, just awesome building out your base, building out your army, taking over the enemy's base, destroying them. Uh, the most recent Command & Conquer game that I can remember, I think this was the last one, was Command & Conquer Generals. And that game was so fun. It had like super power attacks. Like if you could play as like the, the I don't know what they were, like the terrorist faction basically. Um, and like they had like this scud missile attack. Like you had to build up this stru- you had to build up this facility that could do it. And then I think there was a countdown and then you could launch like a, almost a base obliterating attack. Like it was a massive attack at the enemy base that just leveled stuff and left like poison. Um, you could play as China and they had a nuke. You could nuke the enemy's base. Um, you could play as America and they had some other super attack. 
dude, it was so much fun. It had a good story. You could make your own stories. Um, the combat was just, well, the combat, you know, the strategy gameplay was a lot of fun. I love Command and Conquer. Of course, this is another game that freaking EA came in. They bought the studio Westwood. They killed them. They suck. Screw you, EA. But they're going to redeem themselves this year when the game of the year Dragon Age Veilguard comes out. But anyways, I digress. Command and Conquer, I love you. I miss you. I wish you would come back. That is my number two pick. Um, I don't know if either of you guys have any experience or care about those games. Do you? Uh, no, but my neighbor used to play Command and Conquer all the time. And I was like, this is like, I knew the, the game was really old. He's like, yeah, it's my, I, but he loved it. Like he used to play it all. Like when I say he played it every day, he played it every day after school. And he would talk about it all the time. He would draw. I remember in class, because we were in the same, like, I think it was like we were in third grade. He would draw out, like, on, like, a piece of paper, like, the, the battlefield, like, that, like, the, the section, like, the, you know, like, the top-down section where you could see mm -hmm. everything. And he would draw yeah. that out and pretend like he's making movements. He would draw arrows and stuff. I thought it was, like, so, so I've watched him play it. I never played it myself, though. Oh, it's awesome. The generals was so great. Like literally nuking the enemy's base. I mean, that's just fun. You know what I mean? <laughs> Dude, it's like you got to build up and you got to work for it. But then when you do, you get that big payoff. You're like, bye. <laughs> just destroy half their base or more. Yeah, Good I time. thought it was pretty cool. It was it was it was one of those things that like I'm like, oh, I want this game. And I remember asking my parents like it's so like they could never find like like it's so old. We, like we, we can't find it. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the one yeah. that had Tim Curry in it? I don't know. I don't remember. Oh, Who's wow. Tim Curry? Uh, Curry. Yeah, it was. Him. It's Premier Cherdenko in Red C Command and Conquer 3, Red, Red, Alert, Red 3. Alert 3. Yeah. That's so funny. It was awesome. You never played any of them, Hodge? No. They, it's just one of those series that completely passed me by. I had nothing against it. I just, I just never had it. All right. Fair, hey, fair enough. Who's... uh? Who's up next? We got Sean with his number one, right? Yeah, my number Let's one. So for my number one, this is a great series that I really wish would come back. Like I really, really wish it's the Mother series, or in America we got it as Earthbound. So um, the first game was released in Japan as Mother. Never came out here until I forget what year it was, but they released it randomly on the Wii U as Earthbound Beginnings. And it was a literally straight port of the NES version of Mother 1. And then they got Mother 2, which we got in the West called Earthbound. And then they released in 2006 a nice GBA game called Mother 3 that has still never been released here. Obviously, there's fan translations now. But uh, Mother, the Mother series, it's a JRPG. But it it's like what Japan's like cultural... Um, perception of America was at the time of like the 90s so like it's the way they portray America so it's very different and very odd like the localization is like what a Japanese person at that time like would think of America and it was like <laughs> but at the same time there was like psychic psychedelic powers like the characters would have like you, Hodge you've played Smash Brothers like Ness and Lucas like you know how they have like, the psychic mm -hmm. powers yeah. like those are your powers in the game and there are random enemy encounters but it's like it's so interesting how you fight them. Like Ness has the baseball bat, obviously from Earthbound. Like that's one of it. That's his like main weapon. It's like a baseball bat. Um, Lucas has like a tree branch, and it's it's turn based combat. Uh, the story is very. It's like a it's a JRPG, but kind of like a puzzle game too. Like it doesn't really. There's not a lot of hints at like what you should do, and you kind of have to figure out like, oh, I need to bring this guy this magazine, and he's gonna give me this so we can get by the cops. And there's like there's like areas in the map would be like blocked off because cops is like aliens landed on the map and it is a very obscure bizarre game and i played or it took me about seven years to beat earthbound when i was a kid started it in like oh one finished it in like oh eight um it was so such a different type of game for me that it was a jrpg but it was not like like i said it's not like a, you're not fighting creatures you're not fighting alien it was just like a bizarro type of game and i really liked it i loved the art style and um it is so cool like because each you would go to bed and then you would wake up and the more the map would be like the next day more the map would be open so you, for you to explore and yeah it was really cool because you're playing as like kids and you're just running around a world trying to like basically save the world and kind of figure out what's going on and yeah i really liked it uh I'm a, it's a shame that we only ever got really 
we got Earthbound, and we got, like I said, Earthbound Beginnings, which was really hard to play after playing, like, having never played it before, because it was, like, such, it was so, they never, they didn't add any quality of life stuff, like, that they did for Earthbound 1. But, yeah, I'm really hoping maybe one day we'll get Mother 3 over here. Just give us, like, a, just give us a port of that in, in English. I don't care if you localize <laughs> it. I don't even care if you localize it. Just give us a port in English. Translate it. Um, yeah, but, yeah, the Mother series. Hmm. Okay, right. On. I never played it, unfortunately. Got got nothing to give there. Yeah, it was one of those that I just I ne- I remember that cover because it was so like with the little I don't know what it is like the orange dude that has like his hands. Yeah, on the earth on the cover. Yeah, yeah. I remember that cover so well. So I just I don't know why that, that cover always scared me away. And then when I saw on. Um, that's Starman is his name, by the way. Starman. Starman. And then when I saw him in the Smash Brothers game, I was like, oh, these are the kids from Earthbound. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, they're kids? Yeah, in the- very random. Very, yeah. very random. Yeah, so I went back and looked at it. I was like, oh, okay. So it wasn't some weird, like, I was like, I didn't know what this was. And I just, yeah, it, it passed me I, at that point. So I'd never played it. But uh, I do know there's a lot of reference for, for that series. Which is, it's actually funny, Nintendo, funny, funny fact, it's developed by HAL, the people who used to make like Kirby and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, they put an anti-piracy thing in Earthbound that if you pirated the game and it was detected, your every single step you took, an enemy would appear. Like every single time you took a step, an enemy would just appear. <laughs> and I awesome. thought it was, yeah, it's awesome. But yeah, so originally um, they were supposed to make an Earthbound 64 and that was, that was in such development like turmoil that it got canceled and they re, they basically pushed it to the GBA and kind of downscaled it and just made a mother three, mm. which didn't sell well, but it's beloved. Gotcha. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. Beloved series for sure. Um, Hodge, you want to hit us with your number one? Yeah. My last one. I've, I think I've talked about this briefly on the show at some point, but one series I would love from the Xbox 360 generation to make its return is the darkness. Uh, this game was so cool. I remember seeing this game get unveiled at E3. I lost my fucking shit because it looked so cool. And then it held up in my opinion. I thought this game was amazing. I remember th- I skipped the second one for a while because it's, they switched to cell shading and I thought it would look better with the gritty kind of realism of the first one, but the gameplay ended up being amazing for the second one. So I was okay with it in the end. But this this it still exists in comic forms. This is a comic book that still has stories coming out. So they have a lot of material to pull from to make a third game. I don't know what happened to this series or why it just ended at two. And it's it's seemingly forgotten. I remember when we were in a butler for the very first Last Stand Media uh, meetup. We were at the comic book shop and they had a darkness comic on the on the uh, at the shelf and i picked up i'm like man i want this game to make a return and all the people were with her like i've never heard of that i'm like what like i remember this game being huge how do people not re- i mean of course everyone's younger than me there but i'm like how do people not remember this series it was so awesome so yeah i want to see uh for people who don't know it's about a mobster who dies on i think it's his 21st birthday and these demons bring him back to life so it's a first person shooter where you have guns and these demon tentacle things that just impale people and eat their hearts and stuff and it's so it's so cool you have to like avoid the light but break out a like uh break light bulb so it turns darkness so the darkness can go into the area and kill the people it's it was so cool and i would love to see this series make a return i love it so much i've never i never heard of it and i was at that comic book shop with you i remember but i'd never <laughs> heard of this series this, these two games, but I actually just looked up something funny about the game is that I guess there's parts of the game where there's a TV screen on. Mm-hmm. It's an achievement can, to watch if it. You, <laughs> if you sit there and watch, if you stay the entire time, you can watch the entire film of To Kill a Mockingbird. Mm-hmm. Like the entire film's in there. Yeah, that's you, insane. I think you get an achievement for watching it for like 15 minutes or something like that. But that yeah. is insane. Imagine that. Yeah, we're going to watch the To Kill a Mockingbird today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I loved this game so much it was so fun i would love to see it make a return because it was like a horror first person shooter kind of because it was super creepy and yeah i loved it i would i want this series to come back so badly all right 
Good stuff. I've never I've never heard of that game. Uh, I had to look it up. Oh Apparently, it's God. a British rock band too, The Darkness. So. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah, uh, that was the first band. thing that came up. British rock band. Yeah. Have you heard of them? Yeah. You actually heard of them? They're pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Well, shout out to them as well. Um, all right, guys. Let me go ahead and get into my number one. And by the way, when you mentioned mobsters, it, it kind of jogged my memory, and I was like, "Damn it! Why didn't I clu- include The Godfather?" I was actually. I was, I was that's not my number that. one. I was close to doing that too. <laughs> I love The Godfather. That that game. probably would be in my top five had I thought of it, but I didn't. Nice. Shout out to The Godfather. Those games were freaking awesome. Um, but anyways, moving on. My actual number one. The year. It's 1987. I was not playing games at this time because I was just basically an infant. Um, But in the 90s, they came out with a a gold version of this game, and I played it on Sega Genesis. Now, this was by far the greatest pirate game of all time before Skull and Bones came out, which everyone knows Skull and Bones is the GOAT. Shout out to Ubisoft. But of course, I am talking about Sid Meier's Pirates, and uh, and especially Sid Meier's Pirates Gold. That is the game that came out, and I played it. This game was so ahead of its time. It was so awesome. You were a privateer. You could choose to be the English, um, the Dutch, the French, the Spanish, and then you would go out there and basically commit piracy on all the other factions. And I think you might even be able to go rogue. I don't remember, but... Um, They had like the whole Caribbean mapped out. It was fairly big. It would actually take a a kind of decent amount of time to sail around it. Not like crazy, but um, and you could land at all the big port cities. Um, You could get off your ship. You could go and talk to the governor and sometimes they would give you missions like, oh, go, go mess up this person's shipping or go mess up this town. Um, You go into the bar and you recruit sailors and stuff. Uh, You go and haggle with the merchants and stuff because you got to get food and cannonballs and this and that. You could get off your ship and randomly land and like search for uh, gold and stuff or or plant gold maybe. Um, You could actually, uh, when you're sailing, of course, you would see other ships and then you could attack them. And it actually had like kind of like a... uh, like a black flag style pirate, like shooting their cannons at the enemy ship. You could board, unlike Skull and Bones, you could actually board the enemy and it had like a sword fighting mini game where you had like your rapier and you were like fighting the enemy captain. Um, And then once you took it over, you could choose to like scuttle the ship or add it to your, your fleet. Dude, this game was awesome. It was so far ahead of its time. It was a great time. I would love a modern day pirate game that was actually good. Not Skull and Bones. Um, you know, everyone says the best pirate game of all time is, uh, probably black flag, right. Or, or people love sea of thieves too. Of course, that's a great one. Yeah. But the OG Sid Meier's pirates, that's my number one pick. Bring it back, make a new one. Give us a reboot. That would be awesome. Shout out to the goat. Was this like basically civilization before Civ? Uh, well, it's, it's completely different from civilization. Um, but it's the same develop Sid Meier yeah, created civilization. I, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Did you ever play the remake that came out in 2004 for Xbox? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Uh, it had better graphics and stuff. Yeah. Dude, that game's awesome. It's still fun today. You could play that. You should yeah, try it, seems, it sometime. It seems cool. I mean, I just, I just looked it up briefly. It's, it's released on, it first came to Commodore 64 and they ported it to so many different consoles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude. And you'd have you'd be sailing the seas. You'd have to watch out for storms. Yeah. You know, you see the other ships sailing around in real time and you could engage them, talk to them. You could kill them. Um, you could land at ports. You could attack ports. Um, there were like battles where you could attack forts and like uh, kind of take over little cities a little bit here and there. Dude, it was awesome. Great game. That's my number one. All right. Any thoughts on that? And otherwise, let's wrap it up. I have nothing to add. To, I, mean, I hadn't heard of that one, so I have nothing to add to that one. <laughs> I All love right. pirate games, well, though, so I'm always down for pirate games. Well, there you go. Play that sometime. The 2004 one. Um, all right, guys. So that has been it. That is our dormant franchises from five to one. Some great games. Let us know in the comments what you thought, who had the best list as always. It's going to be me. Um, no, just kidding. But, uh, let us know what your dormant franchises that you want to see come back. We will read every comment and appreciate you all. Leave us a like and be great, but we're going to go ahead and wrap it up guys. So let's move on to our final thoughts and let's go ahead and 
We'll start with Hodge, I guess. I'm just randomly going to pick someone. Hodge, <laughs> final thoughts for episode 16, sir. There's a lot of IPs that you'd think gaming companies would want to go back to instead of just kind of regurgitating stuff no one really cares about. Or like, There's so many beloved IPs that are just being left in the past and they need to be given life again. And so any game devs, if you're listening, please make our games that we want. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> That's all I got. All right, guys. And football. Ooh, and football. Can't wait. God, yes. Yeah. All right, boys. Uh, Sean Mason, what is your final thoughts for episode 16? It's a lot of good games. A lot of, a lot of, uh, franchises that are dormant, a lot of dead IP. Let's bring them back. Give me my translated Mother Three. Give me my Wario next Wario Land game. Let's get a new Sim City. Let's uh, let's do it. Let's bring these games back. Yes. Well, well said, sir. Well said. All right. And my final thoughts are just thank God football is back. Everybody enjoy some football and pray to the gods out there that your players don't get injured because damn injuries suck, especially for fantasy football. Jordan Love already getting hurt. Hopefully it's not too serious. But everybody, be great. Have a great week. Enjoy yourselves. Thank you so much. This has been episode number 16, Games Over Plastic. Please clap. And we're out of here. Goodbye. Bye. We have to go back. <laughs> yes, we do.